by Rajiv Varshney from Equisat on open data and genomics. Thank you very much, Tim, and a very good morning to all of you. So, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving us this opportunity. And in this presentation, I'm going to share some of our views and work from Equisat and Generation Challenge Program, which are the CGIR organizations in the area of open data and genomics and modern breeding for crop improvement. So when we talk about the food security or international agriculture, generally we talk about three major crops. They are maize, rice and wheat. But in fact, in addition to these three major crops, there are many other crops which are very important in developing countries. So in terms of the production as well in terms of ensuring the food security and income generation, these crops include several legumes like chickpea, cowpea, pigeon pea or sorghum and millets. And because these crops have not been the subject of the in, uh, attention of international scientific community majority of time or often they are called orphan crops. As these crops they are grown in marginal environments by the source poor farmers, the crop productivity is very less. So now the next question is that how genomics can help improving the crop productivity for these orphan crops. Of course, there are many possibilities and there are different kind of applications. I have listed here two, three, where some of us means uh, we discuss those uh, act, uh, strategies in recently. And these are the three approaches that we have discussed, marker-assisted backcrossing, marker-assisted recurrent selection, genomic selection. So these are the modern breeding approaches. And these approaches have been very successful in developing the superior varieties, but majority of time these examples have been restricted to major crops or in the, the developed world or in the private sector, but this has not been the case in many of orphan crops or in the developing countries. What may be the regions and what we need? We need to have the genomic resources and cost-effective genotyping platform if we would like to see the application of genomics in breeding. And then of course precise phenotyping data. And once we have this genomics and phenomics data, we need be our approach is that we need to have this thing open access or open data so that breeders uh, who have generated information at one location, this can be used by the other breeders at other locations. So this is very important. And then another thing is that we need to have the breeders friendly pipeline and decision support tools. So this is the some of the important approaches we need to use for when we are applying the genomics in the breeding program. As I told, the genomics assisted breeding has been very successful in many case crops, but when we talk about these orphan crops like chickpea, etc., and then we did not have many success stories, but recently, in collaboration with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Generation Challenge Program, ICRISAT has developed or, or basically introgressed one QTLs for drought tolerance in three varieties, one from Ethiopia, one from Kenya, one from India, and now by using this molecular breeding approach, we could identify several lines where we are having more than 24% uh, yield advantage over the recipient varieties. So now what I'm trying to say that success stories have started to come in these crops as well. So in this context, when we are talking about the molecular and now we are talking about the basically translating this genomics research from the laboratory to land, which is the main target of many CGR research institutes. So we need to enhance the crop productivity in developing countries. And when we are trying to use the genomics approaches, then I mentioned earlier that we are having a range of the molecular breeding approaches. And you can see on right hand side uh, on this green color line, which is going high here. So basically we believe that in next three to five years, genomic selection is going to be the approach for the, as a promising molecular breeding approach, especially when the cost of genotyping is going down. You can see this dotted line, the green color line. So that's the approach that we need to use. But again, what we need to do, we need to have the platform. So in this context, and partnership is another important thing where Igreesat and GCP work very closely with several partners. So recently we have sequenced the chickpea genome and this work was a product of 23 organizations from 10 different countries and funded by several organizations. The same thing, we have done the sequencing of the pigeon pea genome. So the sequencing again is the start of the game. This is not the end of the story. And then if we would like to see those application of the genomics and breeding program and as cost of the sequencing is going down, then the idea is that we need to generate the genomics data or the sequencing data, not only from one variety or two variety. And nowadays there are several initiatives where we are generating the sequencing data from hundreds of thousands or hundreds of thousands of the line and now the question is that where how to share these data so this is very important and our approach is that we need to put these data in public domain so that uh, this can be shared 
and now when we are talking about this resequencing, so idea is that basically we are living in the world of the data tsunami. So how to handle this data? And nowadays several organizations they already started to work in this direction. And in context of CGIAR, and yesterday we were having this mention of that uh, some approach of integrated crop data management in CGIAR. So CGIAR already started to discuss these things, and in this context they are discussing with several CG sectors, and in collaboration with uh, Gates Foundation and then the Generation Challenge Program. Generation Challenge Program, and so why we need to have this crop data management? Because this is very important to improve the breeding practices in terms of parental selection, and another thing is that most breeding programs do not and should not operate in isolation. We need to learn from each other. We need to use the data from one breeding program to the other one. So in this context, Generation Challenge Program, again in collaboration with Gates Foundation, have established a platform called Integrated Breeding Platform. An integrated breeding platform provides resources and building professional networks for plant breeding. Here you can get the crop information data. You can download the global crop information data. This is an open access. And then you can upload it again after using or after generating more data. And here in IBP, you can also have a lot of bioinformatic or data analytical tools. We are also discussing and collaborating with VGI and in collaboration with integrated breeding platform and VGI, our approach is that what we need to do in future that we need to have those data collection centers. So for instance, from one center, you need to generate the genotyping data, phenotyping data, environmental data, and then data analysis. And then you are having basically uploading of all these data at uh, one place. And then this is not only at one center, they need to have similar kind of strategy across the several centers. So in the end, what we would like to see that we need to have the global data center. And once we have these global data center, they can be shared by, it, they can be put in the open access and IBP can play a very important role. So basically idea is that if you are having and we would be think that in next few years or if, uh, if we can follow this model then basically this needs to be at the global level and then you can have the different data centers, you can have the global data center. So basically breeders who are geneticists or genomics specialists who have generated information at one place like North America can be used by the breeders in for instance in Sub-Saharan Africa so basically we need to have this global breeding and we can do this thing by putting all these data as open data. So in, we think that in coming years, uh, we, when we have the global data center, they need to have the association linkages on one hand with the omic center, where for instance the genotyping or sequencing service sequencing center, so here they can have the interfaces or uploading the sequencing data or genotyping data. On another hand, you need to have the breeding research center, here CGIR centers, they can play a very important role and then there should be the linkages or again on the right hand side with the field farmers through national agriculture research system. So we need to follow this kind of model and uh, we believe that this can be possible only when the different partners or organizations involved in these different activities, they put all their data as open data. So I think the take home message from this presentation is that open data is essential for international agriculture and omic centers, breeding centers and data centers are the requirements for future international agriculture. And again, the very important thing is data analysis because when we generate huge amount of data, the management, the analysis, the interpretation of data is very important. And this needs to be centralized for effective use of molecular breeding and initiatives like integrated breeding platform can play a very important role. And of course, capacity building and government policies in developing countries are very important. And in this presentation, I have presented the work from, in, uh, from several collaborators, including the Advanced Research Institute and several national partners from South Asia and Africa. And some of our work was funded by Generation Challenge Program, Gates Foundation, USAID, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, and also we are having some grants from Illumna. So thank you very much, and I would be happy to answer any question.